Well, these past several weeks, I know we have a lot of visitors today. We're glad that you're here. You have missed uh, a lot of our series. In these past several weeks, we've been talking about the power of re-gifting. We went back and we looked at this old Seinfeld episode. Don't know how many of you saw that one when they talked about the re-gifter, a person who gives a gift that he or she has received to someone else. In context, he recycled this gift. He's a re-gifter. If you, if you recall, it was a label maker in that episode of Seinfeld. We have been talking, though, about what it would mean to re-gift and embrace the idea of re-gifting those things that God has given us. Now, we're not talking about label makers here. We're not talking about that fruitcake that might be making the rounds this time of year or that ugly tie or that weird knickknack. We're talking about gifts, spiritual gifts, gifts that God has given to us that we can then pass on to the world. Gifts like comfort and forgiveness we talked about one week. Last week, Pastor Pam talked about regifting the good news that Jesus shared when he proclaimed relief to the poor, sight to the blind, freedom to the oppressed. Ironically, or maybe not so ironically, this was actually a message that Jesus himself re-gifted from the prophet Isaiah. Hey, if it's good enough for Jesus, I figure it's good enough for us, right? So as we continue to think about re-gifting today, we are on the cusp of that moment when Jesus is born into the world once again. That moment when after all of this waiting, we really celebrate, when we light all of the candles, make sure to see that last one lit Tonight we'll do that. We light all of the candles. We open all of the presents under the tree. We eat all of the cookies. It's a little bit of an inside joke. If you if you recall last year, I ate all of the cookies. I gained a little bit of weight around my midsection. You'll have to come back next Sunday to see if I can hold myself back this this year. Truth of the matter, though, is, is that we are at that moment when we are ready to celebrate and celebrate big time. And along with the celebration, we recognize that we should also pause. We should pause to think about what this gift of Jesus means in our lives. How does Jesus' message light our path? How does Jesus' life give us life? How does this church, built because of Jesus and this congregation, support us in hard times, uplift us when we're stuck in doldrums, give us an opportunity for fuller living? All of these good gifts of God through Jesus, they're embodied right there in Emmanuel, God with us. This morning, as we inch a little bit closer to that moment when Jesus is born, when we think about this scripturally, we're going to look at one person's reaction to the gift of Jesus, a gift that, speaking truthfully, many would not have wanted. The scripture is Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her, and he said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him to the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end." Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, 
the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Well, first, I want to say just a word of caution here. Let's not get tangled in whether we think that this scripture is historically accurate about immaculate conceptions and angelic visits. For some of us, that literalism is an important part of our faith, and that's fine. For others of us, this truth is just as profound if it's viewed as truth with a capital T, but in metaphor. Now that we can set that aside, let's talk about this scripture. I know for us to look back and look at this angelic visit with a couple of thousand years of perspective, we can read and we can hear this story and think, wow, a pregnancy, what great news. But for Mary, this could have been awful news. An out-of-wedlock pregnancy? An out-of-wedlock pregnancy could have been viewed, would have been viewed, as disreputable, immoral, shameful. At best, this miraculous birth for Mary or pregnancy for Mary would have meant a very, very difficult conversation with her fiancé, Joseph, right? At worst, those are the best case, right? At worst, among the possibilities for Mary were being disowned, thrown out of the village to fend for herself, or even stoned to death. These were very real possibilities. This so-called gift could have been seen as anything but a gift. In some ways, I feel like in this whole re-gifting series, it dawned on me that it seems like we may have put the cart before the horse as we've talked about gift giving. Because we've talked about how we will pass gifts along. We haven't spent much time talking about how we will actually receive gifts, even those gifts that are unwanted. Sometimes we get God's good gifts, and I'll admit for all of us, we get a gift or we have a gift, and we think, oh, great. Because now I know that I have that gift and I know that I'm going to have to pass it along. I'm going to have to pay that gift forward, whether it's time or talent or money or smarts. We all have these gifts. We receive them and then we give them. Or sometimes we have a hard time letting them go, like Pastor Jason was talking about this morning. There are other times when we receive gifts that we wish that we had never gotten. Now, I don't think that God intentionally inflicts any kind of hardship upon us. Like some people think that God might do that to toughen us up or to test our faith. But I think that sometimes there are just difficult circumstances in life. And we experience them, and we experience them with God. And sometimes we experience them and we are better because we did. Even those things give us something to pass forward. The gift of hardship that can teach us perseverance, that can be an inspiration to others. The gift of heartbreak that gives us more compassion for others. Even the gift of unbelief. The gift of unbelief that in the end strengthens our faith and can be an example I know I've looked to others who have received that gift and come through it and who have shown me the power of faith. Sometimes we have to accept gifts that we do not want, and like Mary, 
we say, here am I, a servant of the Lord. Let it be with me. Mary received a number of gifts in this passage, gifts that others may not have wanted. An angelic visit, the promise of God's favor, the gift of learning that nothing is impossible with God, and of course, the gift of carrying life within. But these gifts could have just as easily been viewed as hallucinations, delusions of grandeur, and a troubling pregnancy. But Mary didn't only accept these gifts, she embraced them, and then she went on to re-gift. She kept the gift-giving going. She went to visit her cousin Elizabeth. She embraced her calling with an attitude of servanthood, even joy, dare we say. In just a few verses of here, if you keep reading in Luke, you find Mary's song, a proclamation of God's love and mercy. Mary has something to teach us about re-gifting. Now, we're coming to the end, and I know that some of you may still feel a little bit uncomfortable with this idea of gift giving, whether maybe especially if it's that present that someone's given you and you're not sure you want to give it away. And it's a little easier, at least hypothetically, to think about the gifts that God has given us that we can give, comfort, forgiveness, love, things like that. If you're still uncomfortable after all these weeks, or maybe you're just visiting and you're, I still haven't convinced you today, I want you to hold this. Okay. Jacqueline Whitmore, the founder of the Protocol School of Palm Beach, Florida. Now, I know that means a lot to most of you. She notes that several years ago, etiquette rules would have not allowed re-gifting, but that it's become more popular and acceptable. So even she is getting on board with this. But that doesn't stop her from having some rules that we're going to see in just a minute. Here's the thing, though. What you'll see in all these re-gifting rules for presents for physical things that we might give one another and put under the tree, they rarely apply to re-gifting God's good gifts. You ready? Here we go. The rules of the re-gift. First rule is to mind your social circles. You don't want to re-gift a present among the same friend group. You'll get yourself in trouble just like it in that Seinfeld episode with that label maker. But here's the thing. With God's good gifts... You can pass those gifts back and forth time and time again among your friends, your acquaintances, the folks at work, and even to go a step further, you can go beyond your normal social circle. You can give gifts to total strangers. What's the story of the Good Samaritan after all? But gifts given to somebody who you don't even know. Forget about social, work, social circles. This one is off the table. Next one, make sure some time has lapsed, right? You don't want to re-gift it right away. That seems to be in really poor taste. With God's good gifts, though, come on. That hug that you get, you can give right away three seconds later, or you can wait for just the right moment. The next gift, note who gave you what, all right? This, uh, I forget her name already, Jacqueline. Jacqueline Whitmore, the name that means so much to us. Jacqueline Whitmore has this idea. She says, put all the, put all the re-gifts in one big box or in one special place, and then you take your, post, your post-it note and you write down who gave you that gift and when they gave it to you, where they gave it to you, all that good stuff. Forget all that. At our best, we give gifts not only to those who have given gifts to us, we give to those in need with no thought of repayment, right? That's a gift. Even in the grocery store, right? We might give smiles to those who frown. In the bigger picture in life, we might even repay hatred with love. You know, those things that are Jesus' way. Next, make sure it's the right fit. A re-gift has to come with the right intention, meaning it must fit not only physically, you don't want to give me a boy's small sweater, but it has to fit the receiver's style. You know, this one, I thought about, this one just might carry over. We don't want to just give stuff away to those who don't need it, don't want it, just to give it. We want to give with the right intention to the right person at the right time. So I'm going to hold on to this one. I'm going to keep this one. Next one, don't re-gift within the immediate family. 
All right? Skip the re-gift option when it comes to parents and siblings. Doesn't say anything about spouses, Karen. <laughs> we haven't opened our gifts yet, so it might be a surprise. My goodness, re-gifting God's gifts among your family is probably where we should all start. Kindness, love, and forgiveness. This, 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 is the, this is what keeps families going, right? This is what keeps the gears flowing when we live together and love one another. Next, you can't, give, you can't re-gift a sentimental gift. If somebody knits you a scarf or sweater, you can't go giving that away because... What happens if they want to know how you are doing with it, whether you like it? Well, again, this doesn't really work with God's gifts. Maybe most of them will be sentimental. And the last one, here we go, fess up when you're caught. When you get busted, own up to it. But again, here's the thing, with God's good gifts, you never have to worry. Humility should be the name of the game, but confession would never be necessary when spreading the love, right? Okay, so I want to invite, well, let me, let me go through this. I spent all that time making that slide. I got to show it to you. I want to invite the other pastors up because we have something that we would like to share with you. This has been going around and... Uh, got an envelope in it there was something in there there was something in there huh. oh i put that in there it was just a trick no it wasn't oh. there's 20 bucks in there pam get out of town really, really? There's no 20 way bucks in there. no way this regifting series is almost over but before we end it we want to try to practice what we have been preaching and so we want to share a gift with every one of you here today. God has given us much, and to honor God's gifts, and as a symbol of aspiration for us to all be good re-gifters, we have a gift for everyone. In this basket are envelopes, and in each one of these envelopes, for real, for real, for real, is a $20 bill. Your mission first is to accept this gift and then re-gift it in whatever way you see, you see fit. If you want to give it to a cause, give it to a cause. If you want to buy groceries for a struggling neighbor or pay it forward for the person behind you in line, or if you want to buy a toy and donate it for a toy drive, the only limit here is your imagination. It's important to note uh, that the money that uh, is raised here has come from us personally, as well as uh, money we've raised from our church board and leadership. So it's not like we're taking money out of the church to, <laughs> to, to give to all of you. And as you can tell, this is something we're really, really excited to do this morning. Now, we know what you're thinking. There must be a catch to this. <laughs> well, there is. We put the guy with the MBA on <laughs> there, there is, but we think it's a small one. Also in the envelope is a note card. We would like everyone to write what you would do with this money and bring it back to be posted on a bulletin board right outside these doors. What a beautiful bulletin board that will be. So if you're still wondering why we're doing this, Part of the reason we're doing this is because we recognize that as people who you have called to ministry to be the face of this church, we have the opportunity to be re-gifters every day. We have the opportunity to be paid for things that we love to do. We have the opportunity to be your face in the hospitals, on the sidewalks, here in the church building. And so in some way, we wanted to re-gift back to you. We want to thank you for giving us this opportunity. Now we know that there are visitors here today, but we ask that you would also please accept this gift and take it with you to your communities so that we can spread the joy wide and far. So you might be wondering, what about kids? Can kids take them? Sure, sure. 
Children can take an envelope. It'll probably offer up a great opportunity for some discussion within the family. What do we do with this money? How, who can we give it to? What does it feel like to give a gift away? Maybe you can even combine your gifts and, uh, and, and give it to someone. You'll also find that in each envelope, there's a small, about business, oh, excellent, a small business card size thing, and um, you can feel free to give that with the money if you'd like. Sometimes that will give you a little bit of a motivation or an opportunity to just give, give it to someone without having to say much or anything. And so we provided that there as a, as a thing that you can use as a tool to help give this money away as well. And we think you might have one last question here. You might be wondering, well, pastors, what if somebody takes that 20 and they just put it in their pocket? That's okay. We all have gifts from God that we might not spend the way that we want them, that God would want us to. And so this could be a learning opportunity in more ways than one. We're not worried about that at all. We would really like you to take this gift. If you do not want one, we won't make you take it, but we would really like you to accept this gift. And please do not refuse it because you want to save the pastor's money. Any gifts that will be <laughs> left over will end up going back in the offering plate. So don't be lazy. Please take this gift. Thanks be to God and joy, joy to, to the, the world. world.